With antennas, we talk about the importance of resonance. That is, a resonant antenna is an efficient antenna. But can a non-resonant antenna also be efficient? It certainly can, and I'm going to show you how. Today we're going to talk about NFED antennas. You may be quite familiar with the NFED half-wave antenna. That's a very popular and common antenna that consists of a resonant half-wave of wire at your lowest desired frequency and a transformer at the feed point. Moving the feed point all the way to the end of a half-wave dipole creates a very high impedance of about 4,000 to 5,000 ohms, which necessitates using a 49 to 1 transformer to bring us back to a 50 to 1 ohm match for coaxial cable. This method works well and gives you uh, multiple band coverage, excellent uh, SWR in the fundamental frequency, and then even and odd harmonics usually will work without a tuner. But there is another method of creating an NFED antenna, and it's one of the oldest styles in the book. That's the random wire NFED antenna. Historically, random wire antennas also called the NFED ZEP, uh, due to its use on uh, Zeppelin dirigibles back in the 1930s, dates back to the earliest days of amateur radio. A piece of wire is fed at its end uh, by open feed parallel wire. Uh, if the wire is non-resonant on all of the bands you wish to transmit on, the impedance at the end of the antenna will be quite low, about 450 to 600 ohms. This makes it easy to feed uh, with a 600 ohm ladder line, you'll be on the air. With modern transceivers, you can plug your random or non-resonant wire into a wide range uh, manual antenna tuner uh, with the same effect. Uh, this makes the random wire uh, one of the easiest and cheapest antennas to get on the air. We demonstrated the capabilities in my recent homebrew antenna challenge video. You know, you'll find a link to that video in uh, the video description down below. Another option, and maybe a more convenient one, is to feed the antenna with coaxial cable and to use a, a 9 to 1 transformer like this one uh, to uh, bring the impedance down to 50 ohms at the feed point. Now what makes this antenna unique? Well the key is in the wire length. If the wire is non-resonant on any and every of the amateur bands, it will actually exhibit a lower impedance inside the amateur bands and a higher impedance outside the bands. Typically, this impedance is about 450 to 600 ohms inside the amateur bands, so they are relatively easy to match with a wide-ranging tuner or with a simple-to-construct transformer. Now, how do we know how long of a wire to use? Well, the simple answer is that you don't want to use a wire length that is one quarter or one half wave resonant multiple on any of the HF bands you wish to communicate on. Fortunately, smarter people created simple computer programs to do all of the math and to filter out the good and the bad wire lengths. Uh, so you can look at a chart and pick the wire length appropriate to the uh, number of bands you wish to operate on. Uh, for good 10 through 80 meter coverage, you'll find that a non-resonant wire of about 74 feet is ideal. Uh, this sure beats the 133 feet necessary for an 80 meter NFED half-wave antenna. Less wire makes for an easier to uh, install or deploy antenna uh, in tighter spaces or uh, compromised locations. We can also hang up less wire for a portable operation on 40 meters, which would be um, a line as short as 33 feet. We'll talk more about the advantages and disadvantages in a little bit. So random wire antennas aren't very random at all. They are just carefully prescribed lengths of wire. But you'll have so many non-resonant lengths to choose from uh, that they actually seem, you know, kind of random. So what do we need to put a random wire antenna on the air? Uh, I'm going to go through the process of building a 9 to 1 transformer, or UNUN, which we can feed the antenna with coax. Uh, this is the transformer I built for the homebrew uh, antenna challenge, that recent video I did. I'm going to do the same thing, uh, but place it into a weather-resistant housing like this. 
Roughly stated, to build the transformer, you're going to need a ferrite core and wire. One of the most common methods to build a 9 to 1 transformer is to wind three strands of wire in nine turns in what's called a trifiler winding method. Uh, this means that all three wires are simultaneously wound around the core. For the core, uh, there is many different types of ferrites available. I'm using the Ferrite brand FT140 Type 43 Mix Ferrite. Uh, links to the Ferrite toroid are down, in, uh, down below. Type 43 Mix is good for wideband HF operation. And the medium size core is adequate for 100 watts sideband and CW operation and probably about 50 watts digital. Uh, for wire, I'm going to be using 18 gauge enameled uh, magnet wire. Again, uh, adequate for 100 watts of operation. If I want to operate at a higher power level, I can use a larger core, uh, stack two cores together, and, or use a heavier gauge of wire. Uh, these, the two things that really affect transformers are RF saturation and overheating. Uh, more core material will reduce uh, both of those effects. Let's wrap the core. Uh, Toroids.info has a calculator that tells us how much wire we're going to need for the ferrite. For a 9 to 1, uh, we'll need uh, three paired wires uh, wrapped nine times around the core. The calculator tells me that about 19 inches of wire for an FT140 core is good. Now I want a bit more on the tail ends, so I'm going to increase that length to about 24 inches of wire. Since I'm using enameled wire, it is, it is recommended to wrap insulation around uh, an exposed core. Uh, you can use electrical tape or other insulating material works well. Uh, this will slow the heat dissipation down and uh, slightly increase your length though, so keep that in mind. For the actual winding, hold all three wires and feed them through the core, taking care to keep them from crossing over. While crossovers won't affect the performance, it does make uh, for, you know, keeping them all parallel does make for a neater wrap. Do this nine times. Each time the wire goes through the center of the core is counted as a turn. After wrapping the core, use sandpaper to rub the enamel off the ends of the wires. The enamel acts as an insulator, so we will need to remove it to hook everything up. After that task, I will use a meter to check the continuity of each wire, and I'm going to mark them with tape. Uh, each wire end is marked A1, B1, C1, and A2, B2, and C2. This is going to aid up in the hook, aid in the hookup process. To hook up the antenna, I have prepared this box. It's an outdoor rated conduit box that's available at your local Home Depot stores. I drilled some holes in the box, uh, one quarter inch for the hook on the top and uh, the antenna and counterpoise connections, and on, which are on the sides, and a 5 8 inch hole for the SO239 on the bottom. A step drill bit is really helpful for that. This box is roomy enough uh, for a stack transformer or even a large FT-240 core. So there's plenty of space in here um, for that FT-140 core that I'm using today. We're gonna use this chart to hook up the antenna. A1 goes to the antenna connection. B1 and A2 are connected together. C1 and B2 are both connected to the center pin of the SO239 and C2 goes to the ground or counterpoise along with uh, connecting to the braid of the coax. Once everything is connected, how do we know it works? Well, I like to take a couple of resistors. Uh, in my junk box, I found two 270 ohm resistors, wired them in series for a 540 ohm load. And I placed it on the antenna and counterpoise connections on the box. If the transformer is wired correctly, uh, with an antenna analyzer, you will see a constant of very low SWR across the entire HF spectrum. My transformer appears to be working, so let's get it outside and put it on the air.
So now that the growing season is done, I'm setting up my um, random wire antenna in the uh, wife's garden beds here. Uh, it won't be disturbed for the winter time, so it's, it's a perfect place to, to put it. I just have a fence post here that I've um, temporarily mounted the box to with a couple of zip ties. And on the antenna side, there is a 74 feet of wire that's going to a tree on the back of my property at about 30 feet. So it's in a sloper configuration. On the other side for the counterpoise is, a, is approximately 25, 28 uh, feet of wire. And that's going out the other direction towards the uh, uh, front yard. Uh, I'll stake this down with garden stakes uh, pretty soon. It's going to snow, so nobody's going to bother this wire at all. In fact, you know, no, 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 there's going to be no activity in the garden, so nothing's going to bother this. And then we'll run this um, the coax feed line into the into the house. So it'll take about it'll take about 50 feet of, of coax to get this um, over to the uh, radio, the transceiver in my shack. Now that I got this hooked up, let's get it on the air. And see if we can make some contacts. I got the coax routed from the antenna to the house and I just plugged it into the meter here. We're gonna uh, just do a couple of sweeps. So the first off is we'll just pull up a, a SWR chart. Uh, this is, I'm just gonna center about halfway here. We're gonna scan the whole band. And uh, really that looks very good. Um, on the bottom here at um, 160 and uh, the 80 meter band it's about three to one um, drops down to two to one on the higher bands let's look at the bottom bands here just a little more resolution 40 meters three to one uh, 20 meters two to one really good really good really good plots we'll scroll over here to the upper bands Continue our plot. Some of these we can actually probably run without a tuner. Uh, 17, 1.5 to 1. Uh, let's see, 21, uh, let's see, 15 meter band, 2 to 1, 10 meter band, very good. So it's looking, it's looking nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in to my external tuner and um, well, maybe we can do some A-B testing. Well, see if we make a couple contacts. Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo. Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo. Uh, Roger the 4173 and 2166, you're 5 9 here into Wisconsin, Whiskey, India. I copy the 5 9 Wisconsin, thank you for the contact, 73. 82, YBN, calling CQ Soda, CQ Soda, Victor, Romeo, Victor, Romeo, Romeo, Victor, Romeo. Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo. Uh, Roger the 5-9 and Whiskey 2 Golf Charlie 120. You're a 5-9 here into Wisconsin. Whiskey India. Thank you very much for the 5-9. Uh, much appreciated. You're my first ever 17-meter uh, So Thanks a lot. Kilo Bravo 9 or Victor Bravo Romeo. Well, that's glad to hear. Have a good activation. 73. Have a great day. This is 82 YDN calling CC for Summit on the Air. Do our best. Uh, will do. Uh, there was a couple other stations in there uh, looking for 82 YAR. Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo. Kilo, Bravo, uh, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo. Michael, uh, you are at 5'9". Uh, roger, Roger, you're coming in. You're you're um, fluctuating between a 5'7 and a 5'9. So I'm going to give you a 5'9 here into Wisconsin, Whiskey, India. It was funny, I picked your call sign out just because of the tone of your voice and I recognized it from the video. So I really appreciate the uh, stopping by. You're not out of park today? 
No, I was at a park yesterday. I just put up a brand new antenna today, so I'm just moving up and down the bands and getting a few um, contacts to see how it works. Uh, I mean, the honest report from New Jersey is a, is a steady 5.9, uh, briefly a bit higher at times, so you're doing it. It's working great. And uh, uh, thank you for being uh, one of my, I would say, my favorite YouTubers. So 73, and uh, thanks again for stopping by. So what are the advantages and the disadvantages of a non-resonant antenna? First off, it's going to be space. Uh, you can put up a 10 through 40 meter uh, random wire antenna in as little as 33 feet of space, which is... A great if you're in a, if you've got a limited lot size, uh, small properties or something like that. Uh, an 80 meter antenna, 74 feet of wire. Uh, if you wanted to get onto 160 meters, all you need is 135 feet of wire. So very efficient space wise. Uh, uh, that feature alone makes it really desirable for those with limited lot sizes or if you're wanting a stealth antenna or a, say you, you need a space, you know, lightweight space saving uh, portable antenna. Uh, you can mount these antennas in a variety of configurations. Uh, you can use the sloper like I'm doing, uh, inverted L, inverted V, uh, flat top uh, with a dangling counterpoise. Uh, so they're really versatile in that, in that regards to find a mounting situation that really works well for you. Uh, power handling is only limited by the size of your transformer. So you know, more, you know, a stacked, uh, stacked f uh, ferrite cores or a larger ferrite core with a thicker gauge wire, and you could go from QRP all the way up to QRO. Uh, but there's downsides. With them, every antenna, there's always downsides. You know, first off is going to be the efficiency. Any antenna that requires a transformer is going to have losses, efficiency losses. Transformers generate heat, and heat is lost energy. Uh, these antennas require a counterpoise, so that consideration will need to be taken into account uh, in your deployment. Non-resonant antennas can also present RF uh, in the shack. Now, that's not much of an issue if you're going to be feeding the antenna with coax, uh, but if you're using, uh, say, ladder line, window line, um, a direct connection from the back of your tuner, uh, or have a poor ground or counterpoise, uh, RF can make its way into your system. So just be aware of that. So is a non-resonant antenna uh, or a random wire antenna a good choice for you? Well, it depends. Uh, there's many factors that dictate uh, antenna selection, like band choices, uh, available space, um, HOA or other uh, housing restrictions, uh, portability. Antennas, you know, are they're just a tool and there's no one size fits all solution. But the random wire or non-resonant antenna shouldn't be dismissed as a poor or compromised antenna. It has a long history and it has stood the test of time as an effective radiator. Building the transformer isn't difficult, so give it a try. Uh, you might find it's very workable uh, for your needs. Well, what do you think about random wire antennas? So leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Uh, questions too. If you like this video and want to see more of this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe. That tells me uh, that's the, this is the kind of thing people are looking for. Uh, but uh, for this time, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73. Making last call, thank you. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. I got a Victor Bravo radio, go ahead. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo, you're a solid 5-9 here into Wisconsin, Whiskey India. Kilo Bravo 9, Victor Bravo Romeo, 5-9 both ways and life is good. Hey, I love to hear that. You have um, you have a great day, 7-3.